Hi everyone, welcome back. Professor Hank here. So today we're talking about UML class diagrams in the context of writing Java programs. So what is a UML class diagram? It is a object-oriented programming design tool useful for helping you to design classes in your programs. So the UML class diagram specifies the name of a class, the names and access levels of the variables that belong to a class, and also the names, return types, parameter lists, all that stuff for the different methods that are going to make up the class. So by having this, you can get a good start on the class. Now, it's not the only thing that you would need to design a class, right? You would still need some descriptions to describe the logic that would be secondary to this tool, but this is a good tool for giving a high level overview of what a class should be. So in the corner there, you'll see that I've got a start to a UML class diagram. And UML class diagram is a box subdivided into three regions. Top region is going to contain the name of the class exactly as how you would write it in your code. Middle region is going to contain all of the member variables, all of the fields for your class, including their access specification. And even you know what you might initialize values to, that goes in the middle region. In the bottom region, you have descriptions for all of your methods. So the return type, the access specification, the name of the methods, parameter lists, and so on. So let's go ahead and see how this works by writing a class. So I'm gonna have a class square. So if this class is gonna be named square, then the upper portion, I'm gonna write square exactly as how it would appear in my code. Now, if my square is going to have a variable for storing the length of the side of a square though I'm gonna to have to have is I'm gonna to have to have a name for that variable. So let's say that I'm gonna name that variable side. So I would type that in that middle region. And then I would have after that a colon followed by the data type of that variable. So side of my square might be fraction of a unit. So maybe my the length of the side of my square might be like 3.2 or something like that. So because of that, I'm going to specify that the data type be a double. Now you have four options for access specifiers that we can use for our variable. If we don't specify anything at all, if we leave it as it is, then that's known as package access. That's how you indicate package access. If you want to indicate that the variable should be private, then you put a minus in front. If you decide that you want the variable to be public, then you put a plus in front. And if you decide that you want the variable to be protected, you want to use a hashtag in front. So I'm gonna make my variable private, and so it's gonna have the minus in front of it, okay? And you can optionally specify that it should be initialized by putting in equals and the value you wanna initialize it with. So if that was what my design called for, I would go into my class and I would type in private double side equals zero. And that matches up exactly with my UML description. So private for the minus, side for the name, it's a double, and I've initialized it to zero. So now let's add some methods to our design. So the first method I'm going to include is going to be a constructor. So the constructor needs to be public, so I'm gonna have a plus there. And then this constructor has the same name as the class. And then I'm gonna specify a parameter list. So I want to be able to initialize my square with some other value. So I'm gonna put in my parameter list, the name of the parameter, we'll just do S for side, a colon, and then the data type double, because I'm going to initialize my side, side can be a double, therefore the value I pass the constructor should be able to be a double. So we have that. Now there's no return type for constructor, so I'm just gonna be done at that point. I don't have to add anything else. So if I go to write the code for my constructor, then I would go and I would do public for the plus, I would do square for the name, and then I would do double S for the parameter list. Now, UML class diagrams, they don't specify any kind of logic. So what I'm gonna add here is just the logic, but it's not gonna be showing up in the UML itself. So here, I'm just going to set the side to S. Okay, so that is my constructor. Now I want to have an access or a mutator. So let's go back to our design here. I'm gonna have a set function and it's gonna be public. So we're gonna do plus, and then we're gonna call this function, this method set side. And then I'm gonna put 
in its parameter list s double again. But now I'm going to have a return type because regular methods have to have return types. Now, since this is a setter, it doesn't need to return anything for my design. So that's going to be void. So then when I go back to write this method, I'm going to do public void set side double s. And then the logic for this is going to be very, very similar. It's just going to be this dot side equals s. Right now I want to have an accessor method. So I want to be able to retrieve the contents of my side field, my side variable. So I'm going to go and add to my design a public method called get side. Its parameter list is going to be empty and it's going to return a double. Why? Because my field is a double. So I don't want to lose any precision on my return, right? So now let's go into our code and add that to our design. So public or to our class double get side parameter list is empty just like the UML diagram and all this is going to do is simply return the contents of the side field now we'll add one more thing here we'll add a method for calculating and returning the area of our square so we'll need a public method it'll be named get area and it's going to return a double because area of a square is its side squared so a double square needs to be a double so it's going to be a double needs to be a floating point number. So we'll do public double get area. And then we're gonna return the side squared. So this side times this side. So let's do one last example. Let's say that for some reason I needed a protected method and I wanted it to return a string and accept a couple of arguments. And I decide that I'm gonna name the method foo and I'm gonna to pass to it an integer. So maybe I'll do something like x int and then Let's say that I want to also pass it a character. Maybe I'll do a C care, and then I want it to return a string. So if I wanted to add that to my class, I would go back to my class and I would write protected string foo, because we're returning a string, it's protected. And so I have two arguments that I want to pass it. One's an integer, and so I have a parameter named x, that is type int. And then I also want to accept a character, so I'm going to have a character parameter named c. And then I would include the logic in my method here. And if I wanted to have a two string method, a very last example here, then I'd make it public and I do two string and then that thing would return a string. And so then I would just add that to my class as we've been doing, just do public string to string. And then I would include my logic for that in here. Okay, and of course you can also have as many fields as you want um, in your class. So if we wanted to have one more in here then we could do something like you know, maybe i wanted a public variable named dog and it was going to be type short then it would look like that and i would go back to my class and i would add you know, public short dog so that's how it translates so uml diagrams very useful for helping you design your classes and they incorporate three different areas. You've got the name of the class. You've got the area for the fields or the member variables. You've got the area for the methods or functions. And you can specify all the different access types, public, private, protected, package. So now you know the basics of UML diagrams, how to create them, and then how to implement a class based off of a UML class diagram. As usual, if you're a student of mine, you have any questions about content in this video or in any of the videos for our course, feel free to email me via Canvas or stop by my online Zoom office hours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.